Okay, we're going to go into another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. We have a little bit of a special segment uh, sponsored by, of course, Montro Straps, which we'll give them a quick look here a little bit later in the video. But this video is going to be revisiting one of my most viewed, actually the most viewed singular review, not a comparison, not one that had five watches in the video, but just one very fantastic watch that uh, really had such a huge uh, impact for my channel and also my collecting uh, in general in terms of really just solidifying Seiko as, as kind of my personal brand. Um, so, I mean, of course, I collect a lot of different watches, um, but having a few here and a few there doesn't necessarily make you a collector of those watches, maybe a collector within those genres, but in terms of brands that I collect, uh, Seiko, it has to be the one, um, which has been uh, definitely a bit of a journey coming around because to be quite honest, the when I first started collecting, uh, you know, I wasn't super fond of the SKX uh, when I, I bought uh, a bunch of different Orients before I even gave the SKX a chance because I wasn't too thrilled with it in general because I felt it was a bit underspecced and a bit outdated. Um, but, of course, a little bit about the brand. Seiko was founded back in 1881. They are Japanese in origin, now in fact, throughout Asia. They cover all market segments from entry level to high end. This is a dive watch. It's actually paying an homage to the original Seiko dive watch. But some key comic characteristics and designs, you're looking for something within this genre, of course, you're going to want water resistance. Typically, there's some type of screw-down crown. You're going to say this tough, legible with a dive time bezel, and a dive extension is always nice if on bracelets. Again, a very special thanks to our segment sponsor Montro Straps, producers of fine FKM rubber straps with a focus on thin, super comfortable silhouettes that go with almost anything. This is the Seiko Prospex SPB143, which is the international nomenclature, but this is actually a JDM one that I got. So it's a, technically an SBDC101, uh, which is the JDM release Japanese domestic market. And it's a standard production, modern reinterpretation of Seiko's first diver, the legendary 62 MAS. These MSRP at about 1200 bucks, but you can get this particular unit, uh, and this, I shouldn't say not this unit, but uh, you know, this model for $982 from Sakura Watches. So with that long intro out of the way, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer look. Okay guys, now before we dive in, quick little uh, plug for Montro Straps, the channel sponsor today. So here is their packaging, quite clean. You do even get little magnetic keepers there to keep your detent closed. Now, uh, now, of course, as I've reviewed uh, many straps over the years, in particular FKM straps that have become more and more popular and widely available, I found that, of course, a lot of times you can be kind of reviewing the same strap with just a different buckle and a different name etched on it. So I was actually very pleasantly surprised when these Montreux straps came across my table because they were actually different guys like these are uh a different and not for that much money check that out uh, you still do get that nice bit of structure here but a bit more of a dramatic taper in terms of thinness which is going to equal comfort right the pliability here is very very nice and then of course you do have a bit of structure and you do have a little bit of curvature to make sure that you're keeping that mechanical timepiece nice and secured on your wrist now if you have a big old uh you know chunky thousand meter diver or something like that um you know hey maybe this might feel a bit flimsy but for those of you that are just wearing everyday pieces thinner diver silhouettes uh field watches pilots watches just kind of that everyday type of watch these can definitely be your everyday strap option uh, so yeah, I just wanted to show that really quick. Again, pretty impressed with these and a big shout out to Montro for uh, one, sending these awesome straps in, which you guys can check my channel history and find the full reviews, but also um, sponsoring this little segment where I revisit, uh, you know, a real classic watch. It's become a classic over the years. So three years and some change later, um, you know, how have my perceptions of this particular 
watch changed and evolved over time, especially after really getting into some high-end Seiko watches and just expensive watches in general. Uh, you know, uh, let's say something like compared, and I've done video comparisons of this across tons of other watches uh, to Zen with their, uh, you know, U50T, which I own also to a Lenten Black Bay uh, 58 Blue. Um, and then even against Seiko's own SLA 01, seven which is a even more premium uh you know not just a recreation but a reissue almost uh in terms of the level of attention to detail of the classic 62 mas watch even with all that said and all of that exposure there's something that i keep returning to with this watch um and it's undeniable now is the level of fit and finish all the way up there with some of those other watches that I mentioned. No, it's not. But also the price isn't all the way up there. And and there's something, of course, about a wearable, utility-oriented tool watch. I think this, you know, the SPB143, it just, it just hits that sweet spot, guys. It's completely wearable without worrying about the value, without worrying about any of those other things. It has that super hard coning, that Dia shield. You're getting drilled lugs, 20 millimeter lug width. So you can throw this on a trap, a tropic strap. You can throw this on a waffle accordion, whatever you want. And it's gonna look fantastic. And it's, so much of it has to do with the proportions, the width, the thickness of this bezel insert, the uh, size of the dial, the placement, so much to really enjoy here. A little bit of dust on that. But this has just been, again, it's been a bit of a revelation for Seiko and for me. Now, I've done full reviews, I've done comparisons, but let's just jump in very quickly for those of you that might have just stumbled across this video. Uh, 40 and a half millimeters in diameter, so 40.5, 13.8 millimeters thick, and 47 and a half millimeters lug to lug. Uh, you do get a curved sapphire with an inner AR coating, super clear. Um, and then the movement inside is highly debated, but it's a 6R35, which has a 70 hour power reserve and a three hertz beat rate uh, that has a 21600 vibration per hour sweep to it. Uh, that is more than sufficient, especially for something like a dive watch. Now, of course you do get exposure to smoother beat rates. I mean, me even the SLA zero, Three nine, um, as, which is a high beat, which is uh, a whole nother level, uh, you know, at five hertz, right? Uh, let alone the four hertz sweep of, let's say, my SLA zero one seven. So, even with those smoother interactions, even with uh, being exposed to things like spring drive, I will say the three hertz is again, it's fine. It's 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 not anything to drool over. Um, but it works, and with that 70-hour power reserve, it works really well. And for me, I've had very good luck with 6R35 movements and 6R movements in general, um, and just Seiko movements in general, guys, uh, whether it be NH or 4R or even the 7S26, um, going all the way back, or S7S36, um, if we want to get down to it. Um, I've been very lucky. I've only really had to kind of uh, make an adjustment on maybe one or two out of 30, 40, 50 watches. Um, so I've been probably more of an exception to the rule, um, but I will say as much as folks like to regurgitate how unhappy they are with this movement, um, yeah, those are gonna be the loudest people, uh, right? Are gonna be the ones who are unhappy and there's gonna be, it's like mar being married. If you just listen to what people told you, you'd probably think being married is one of the worst things you can do because people who are unhappy with it are going to be the loudest and people that are happily married are just happily married doing their thing. People that are happy with their watches aren't on the forums talking about their watches. They're just out enjoying them, right? Uh, people who love their watch, they're not just gushing about it on YouTube, but the people who are upset with their watch when something goes wrong are gonna be ranting about it, reposting. So, you know, there is that little level of skew there. Um, so, you know, again, in my personal experience, I can't say that this is an unreliable movement because it's been nothing but reliable for me within my experience of, and of having hundreds of, of watches comparative, again, to uh, other movements, uh, whether they be from ETA, uh, Salida, Soprod, 
all these other movements, in-house movements from other brands and everything, French movements from Yema, all that, hey, this has still been performing really, really great. Now, um, of course, there's all the other little details, hey, that this is, you know, a diver's 200 meters watch. Of course, this is pre their update in terms of ISO compliance, so there is no uh, three o'clock loom plop. But hey, I'm fine with that because you, in exchange, you get this really nicely beveled window. And you know what? If if uh, I'm, I'm absolutely rambling, but <laughs> if I continue this ramble, um, this has kind of been a signature watch for me. And before Teddy Balthazar was asking me what my most worn watch was, this was it. Um, and you know, it would kind of got dethroned by some other watches. Um, you know, most notably, let's say the uh, Slim Turtle. Uh, SPV 317, which I enjoy very much, but isn't technically a better watch than this. Um, it's I maybe in certain ways I favor it more, but it's not better. And then the SLA 017, which is better than this in every way, except for maybe one uh, that I really enjoy, which is this has a shielded loom pip. The SLA has an exposed loom pip and uh for those reasons i have to be careful with uh you know if i get that loom pip dirty I, I do worry about it getting stained or patinaed over time um and i don't have to worry about that with this so the, again and then also just the the proportions they're different they're modern um there's something about it that just comes together it's not about one little feature or detail it's the compilation of it all kind of again coming together holistically to make a really great watch. So with that said, let's actually get it on the wrist and talk about how it wears. Okay guys, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, really just, it just does it guys. Of course, if I get my wrist a bit too close to the camera lens, you're gonna get some, uh, you know, a perspective distortion. It's gonna feel a lot larger than it really is. So what I like to do is keep my wrist nice and low and then just tighten up the frame ever so slightly so you guys can get a bit more of a detailed look uh, while still keeping a truer aspect ratio of just how centered and well this actually drapes across the wrist. And you can see there, I do have quite a round wrist there, so it's not just flat and wide. Uh, so I do have to pay attention to lug widths and you know proportions and case shapes. I don't just have some huge wrist that accommodates to everything, but I will say this wears just about perfectly, guys. Could it be thinner? Sure. Could it be more refined? Sure. But then it'd be a different watch. It'd be the SLA, which I, technically the SLA is uh, on paper uh, slightly thicker um, because of the thicker movement that's inside. But you can see this lays beautifully. It has really nice chamfers. It just does those little things really, really well. And yeah, the, the bracelet can be a bit bulky and you know, people aren't crazy about the way that it flows or doesn't flow into the case. But you know what? I think it works. I think it looks great. Uh, I really dig it. On wrist is one of the best places for this watch. Uh, and it's very enjoyable. And if I you know, didn't have the funds or the aspirations to chase down so many other different watches, I could be absolutely just happy with this. I mean, again, this watch has been compared to watches of three times the cost and up and even more expensive than three times the cost. Um, and it still holds its own. It's still a Seiko diver. It's still horologically significant because it is paying homage to one of Seiko's own designs. Uh, it's first diver at that. Like imagine now if, uh, you know, it's uh, this same statement, but for other brands, Blanc Pawn and their 50 Fathoms, uh, Rolex and their Submariner, right? Uh, Omega and their Seamaster, those watches have so much prestige. Today, uh, Seiko, because they do offer more affordable pieces to include this watch, um, that's probably its only downfall. If they would have just kept going up market from the very beginning, then nobody would really question what they're offering. Um, and then they could even bring out a, a cheaper alternative like with Tudor, right? It's a, oh, here's a cheaper version of our main product. Now they've always just done mainstream versions of their products and try to make them the best that they are. And they do separate them by different tiers, prospects, uh, you know, presage, uh, 
and you know grand seiko king seiko credor um you know and everything in between so uh, you know at the end of the day those are all seikos though so everybody kind of just wants the most expensive and desirable seiko uh traits and attributes in the cheapest package because seiko still sells cheap watches too they still sell great hundred dollar watches so everybody wants the ten thousand dollar watch and the hundred dollar watch right um and that's never going to happen but this is kind of a sweet spot at about a thousand bucks. Um, it just gives you a whole lot. Uh, you know, it's it's well balanced. And I know a lot of people are looking for that. Some people just want that nice value sweet spot, that trade off where, you know, the diminishing returns aren't diminishing as bad. So, you know, I think that's kind of where this watch really lives. So with that said, let's actually get this piece off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, low light transition and closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Hey, hey, hey. it's a dive watch. It's a Seiko diver. Um, and yeah, it's it does its job absolutely one thing i always like to work in is a bit of a low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight a lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings walking underneath overhangs or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree so it is nice to see what these colors textures and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting maybe include a bit of harsh lighting which typically could expose any types of production defects but all you can see here is this dia shield holding up really well and again those high polished lustrous accents it was still very full of luster <laughs> the deep high polish is still very high polished the brushing is still really well brushed and a lot of that has to do with of course the fact that it does have that hard coating which has done its job now is it the hardest treatment out there no is it the prettiest treatment out there no it does add a little tint of darkness but man it just does the job. Again, it's not necessarily the best. Maybe the this would be a good example of being a jack of all trades and a master of none. Uh, it just, again, it just comes together. And I, I love this watch so much again. And I do have way more expensive watches that are better. I have so many watches that should be better and you know uh, than this um, that are better. Um, but there's, again, there's some type of magic in here that uh, just really speaks to me so closing thoughts guys on the wrist great goldilocks like fitment they really set a new standard for modern thousand dollar seiko divers <clears throat> before that there really wasn't a space for that it was like 500 and below and then like 2000 and up and i know a lot of people don't even like to acknowledge the fact that there have been expensive seiko divers for 20 30 40 50 years um it's just they weren't into Seikos back then and uh, they just were expensive and they just never thought that they would they wouldn't they entertain those watches with hard lex crystals and you know big thick proportions and really quirky layouts and, and all that right but they did exist this really was quite groundbreaking in that it became that Goldilocks that just beautiful sweet spot um in terms of trade-offs right um in terms of model variants there's many variations that have continued to be released over the years um, almost too many to keep up with to include special texture dials and even sla and sje premium offerings right in terms of just recreating that and, and re-tapping into that original 62 mas dna from 1965. now in terms of comparable models this model is again it's often compared to other watches including myself and um, this channel that costs three times as much from swiss tudor black bay 58 to german zin u50 yet somehow this watch still manages to compete it still manages to be in the conversation maybe it doesn't win the argument but it's still in the conversation right which is pretty good considering it's a third of the price of watches that it's being compared to so you have to get some level of credit for that right it's still a bit of an underdog um, and it has that fight in it though, right? Uh, that, that really fights for your wrist time and your admiration. So for me guys, bottom line, even three years later, the SPB 143 still out heritage, it out heritage similar micro brands, um, and it out in houses, similar priced Swiss divers. So that's just, again, that's just something that's kind of different, something that's kind of special. It has Seiko's in-house qualities packed into a diver with presage-like fit and finish. Um, 
that have combined to create a bit of a modern classic here. Uh, you know, to the point to where some factory competitors have even been able to launch entire brands quite successfully based off of homages dedicated to a genre reinvigorated by the release of this very model. This watch didn't only launch Seiko into a new space, it launched a bunch of homage brands into the mainstream for being able to create something that captured something like this, but for an even lower cost with a bit of a taller spec sheet. Of course, without the heritage, without the in-house, you know, without all of those other factors, um, you know, this watch really helped kick that off and that's I don't know there's something really cool about that and that just it's it's quite iconic in those ways so um I mean think about it think about all these other brands that have a variation of the 62 MAS the 62 MAS has been around since 1965 it was only until this watch was released that those models those homages really became mainstream did they exist before yeah there was a couple of brands that were doing them here and there that's great but I will say the whole boom of the desirability around something, a dive watch that looks like this, this skin diver, you know, Seiko aesthetic um, has been owed, you know, a great debt to this watch and to this release. So, uh, yeah, for that, this watch will always be in my collection. And, uh, you know, if something were to happen to me today, I was about to get hit by a train. I feel like, uh, you know, my, my boys would probably fight over this watch because it just has that signature air to it and it's not the most expensive it's not the most desirable it's it's not the you know um again it's it's not it's a jack of all trades it's not the master of any one it's it's not the most expensive it's not the most limited um but it just it's it's kind of the most itself and and i like that about it so with that said this is a long one <laughs> that's what she said let me know <laughs> What you all think down in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.